Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode, Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures, episode 85, and it is that time of the month. It is Gear of the Month time. Second Monday, or not Monday, <laughs> uh, second Wednesday in every month or second week of the month. If you're new, we do kind of a, a Gear of the Month dealio. We pick a piece of gear, we give our opinions on it, and maybe offer you guys some suggestions uh, based on our experiences and some of the research we have done to hopefully, if you were in the market for the said piece of gear, it'll help you towards what you want. Of course, we get no kickback from this. This is strictly our opinions. We are not funded or supported by any brands, so don't think about it that way. Uh, but yeah, so tonight we were going to chat about compasses. And frankly, this is something you're probably a little bit more informed about than I am tonight, Ben. I mean, it's something you use a lot more often than I do uh, on the regular, I would assume. Uh, in my previous employment, I used to use it quite a bit. But in my current employment, we really don't have a whole lot of use for them. <laughs> no, um, I, I have used them quite a bit over the years. I mean, I use them with Search and Rescue. I, I learned learn them in the military and i used them quite a bit growing up uh i wouldn't consider myself an expert per se but it is a tool that i'm somewhat familiar with and i, I do enjoy to use and as such i do have definitely some opinions that i don't mind sharing on them so uh this could be quite interesting there is compasses are something that there's so much out there uh and it's a question i think you often hear a lot is what compass should I get? How much should I spend? What do I, what functions or features should I really be looking for? And over the years, I've kind of come down to a certain set of features that I, I consider fairly important. And uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what we both find interesting, necessary, what we, we prefer. Um, and so it's going to be quite, uh, quite a fun one, but, uh, you know, the end result is a compass can help you find a location or probably more important, help you find a way out. Uh, and, and there's a whole skill set. We've, we've spoken a bit about this in past episodes, telling people, you know, a little bit about compasses and stuff and and really encouraging people to to learn to properly use them. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I guess we can sort of move along there a little bit um, and uh, sort of get uh, a little bit of a background from you. So you used them in a, in a past job quite a bit. You mentioned to me before you guys used to do survey lines. So you set a set line and just drill through, right? Yeah, so uh, it's no... It's no secret, I've mentioned it before, I used to work with natural resources, uh, prior employment to what I'm doing now, and I was on the fire crew for Halifax East, uh, but of course we had other duties, just aside from being on the fire crew, because I mean, the woods aren't always burning, so we had to fill up that time, and a lot of things that we used to do was we'd do like, uh, we do park surveys, we would do line surveys, uh, which we kind of got out of towards the end of my career, uh, because the digital age kind of replaced the man on the on the ground deal but once upon a time there used to be wine crews and basically there are anybody that's been out walking in the woods you might have actually stumbled upon one of these surveying poles which is just kind of those white four by fours you may see out in the middle of the woods with a little rock pile below them um they are a survey stake usually set out there by lands and forests now, I guess, or lands and forestry is what they call themselves now at the time. It was natural resources and maybe it was lands and forests. Um, but anyway, that, that's what we used to do. And yeah, it's exactly that. You, you usually start at one of these poles. Uh, they give you a bearing and then it's like you beeline it dead straight through and you blaze a line. Uh, you may have to trim it out. They may just want it blazed. There's a couple different ways we did them depending on what that line was for. And that's the majority of where I used to use compasses. We did have a, you know, proper map and compass training through natural resources. It was a requirement because, of course, our jobs took us out into the woods. Uh, other things we did were like pellet group inventories, which we have talked about in the past. We had to use a bearing on our compasses with that. Um, and, and just, you know, general stuff like that. I won't get into too much of the rest of it because it is quite boring, but those were the big ones was line surveys pgis and of course if we were fighting a fire 
or more specifically during like mop up of fires and stuff like that they came into play uh, a lot before GPS has became very prominent you'd get a map you'd have your compass and they'd just be basically like okay so here's the area if the fire was big enough this is basically the area you're going to be working in here's a map your compass kind of keep yourself oriented in that area and report back you know what I mean and that's where it all came from and, and of course as time went on digital age took over compasses weren't as prevalent but we always still had to know how to use them and we still use them for the odd thing yeah so sort of in parallel like search and rescue we we do tend to use our, our gps's now there's gps's built into our, our radios and we have a gps we carry and almost most members actually have their own personal gps's that are part of our gear uh above and beyond that most cell phones are capable of, of all of this but because there is the possibility that your electronics would all go under, uh, I think that's relatively rare, but a, a compass is basically your, your backup. Um, and it's a very good backup. It's, 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 it serves a lot of uses and it's a very fun hobby, regardless of whether you ever actually need to use it, you know, in a life death situation to learn to use that really helps you learn navigation and learn how to, to get around in the woods. So, where GPS is very forgiving, it's going to give you, I'm at point A, I want to get to point B, you veer off, it's going to constantly correct you. But a compass, you kind of have to do straight bearings or learn how to deviate around spots, which is, there's there are methods for that too. Um, but for all of them, there's a few things you really need to know. Uh, you, you need to be able to set your compass to a set bearing. Yes. And I guess worth mentioning uh or something i wanted to mention before we went too far into this is if people aren't aware there are technically two norths there's a magnetic north and a true north uh and when we talk about declination you can set that with most modern compasses minus some of the uh, smaller ones like this doesn't have a declination adjustment on it but a lot of your good compasses and good as relative term will have a declination set so you can actually correct for true north or magnetic north depending on what your map is rated for so just a little food for thought before we go too far in because you may hear us say north and we are speaking of north in general most compasses point to magnetic north unless you set the declination off and then it's still just you have to know your declination to make it work correctly 100 percent uh and interestingly enough most likely in our in our lifetime we may actually see north and magnetic north meet. Yeah, because it's been exponential. Uh, every yeah. year there is a variance between true north and magnetic north, and there's a website, I can't remember what it is, we used to have to go in uh, at a certain time of the year, and we'd have to look that up, and we'd all set our declinations and things would be great. But as you said, lately it's been exponentially shifting uh, to the point where it's probably going to cross, and it's going to be one and the same, much like you said. Yeah, and it... It, the, the theory is it'll, uh, if, if you track how it's been going, I'm going to just look it up. Uh, they, it's right now it's within Canada, but they think that it could very well end up in Russia. And yeah, uh, I, I can't remember how many years off it is, but, uh, but like you said, it's where it is increasing exponentially it, it shouldn't be long before the two of them actually cross over um and yeah and that's just an fyi i mean if you got a compass and as long as you're file following the declination you're setting on it or the direction you're setting on it and you're not trying to mix the two it's going to give you a general guideline if you got to get out of somewhere uh you know in, in principle so if you're following magnetic north which compasses point to uh that's fine it, the, your declination comes into play a lot if like we said you're using maps or something like that they may have a declination on them they may tell you it's true north or magnetic north uh it's just something to be aware of depending on how far you go into using a compass what you find out ben uh i didn't find a good one and uh that it was rude to keep going honestly yeah so, honestly if you guys are interested in something like that that's something we can cover in another topic unless ben happens to find it while we're chatting otherwise just google it it's actually a pretty interesting uh topic i mean yeah i can hear the eyes rolling now and people saying oh it's just north but i mean 
if you go out in the woods and you are a little bit passionate about compasses and you don't have to be a compass geek but if you are interested in compasses at all it's actually interesting to look this stuff up because there's a lot of science going on behind it it's more than just well i guess at the basics off it is literally just a piece of metal that's being pulled to the north pole or south pole depending on you know the uh the hemisphere you're on and it, it's uh it's just pretty interesting stuff but anyway that was a little history of compasses and its terminology. Uh, that's not why we came here. We came here for recommendations on compasses and stuff like that. And as Ben alluded to a little earlier in the episode, we actually have purposely not chatted about this too much simply because we both do have a little bit of background coming into this. And we kind of wanted to see where our opinions are going to differ and what our similarities are going to be. Uh, the only real talking we had was a few minutes before this. Ben had his recommendations. I had my recommendations. And I pulled them up on tab so we can show them to you guys. And we're going to talk about them. Once again, if you're new, we usually start from most budget friendly or entry. We I don't like entry level. It's going to be budget friendly because it tends to be the cheapest up to the most expensive. Uh, that we would recommend. And I mean, there's still going to be ones beyond what we're going to recommend, and there's going to be cheaper ones than we recommend. We're just giving you the ones we feel are the best for the bang for the buck in their categories. Safe to say, Ben, did you want to add anything into that? Well, no, I, I agree 100%. I, I did kind of want to sort of steer people towards some things to look out for when they go to buy a compass. So in my hands here, I have a little compass this one's by Broadstone. I'm not going to knock Broadstone because my next compass I will eventually talk about is also a Broadstone. It's a perfectly fine compass. This one has a few problems. One of them is that this thing comes right out. I hate that. Yeah, it that's not a good me. thing. <laughs> uh, no, and like you'll be setting it and you'll be walking in the woods and you're you're going along and next thing you know it falls out on you and, and that's very sad. Uh, it means that your your numbers, like if you set it to a certain uh, degree you got to remember that now and put it back in and find that and, and this this is a bit of a problem the other problem you mentioned declination and although it has a little chart in here for how to do declination this one isn't adjustable so you're stuck with true north and north and having to do the the math of it's so many degrees off or so many degrees so that also bothers me so when you're buying a cheap compass, even if it has a lot of the things you want it to have, if it doesn't have everything you want to have, it's going to be a bit of a problem. I really look for ones with scales in them, and, and I look for ones that uh, are very functional and usable. So I like to be able to see through the compass so I can line it up with the grid lines on my map. Uh, but that, I just wanted to hit on a few things that I have on this particular one. I mean, this is my backup one for Search and Rescue. And it is functionally fine. Like, if you know what you're doing, you can use it. You just have to think a bit more. Once you get into a more professional one that has the ability to, like, a little, it's usually, in this case, a little screw hole that you turn the screw and you can turn the whole thing. Um, so realign your, uh, your north-south uh, versus the red in the bed type mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking about i know exactly you, what you're talking about the two arrows up um so that's just something i wanted to hit on um and probably to get a bit more into detail do we want to like show a few different types or do you want to start off with some of our suggestions and move along uh we can talk about it briefly if you want and i think we can bring it up as we're going through um yeah. Only for the necessity on this one to try and keep the the target references going. And then to the end, I'm sure we're going to do our normal divulgence into a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so starting yeah. off, uh, <laughs> I can tell, uh, and I kind of figured this out as we were getting ready for this. But uh, yeah, you're, you're a, a very keen person on having a clear base plate in your compasses, which I can't fault you for. And I already said this. Um I myself, my belief is what are you going to be doing with your compass as to if it's going to match up to what you're doing. Now, a clear base plate, if you're going out in the woods and you're using any kind of map, it's a necessity. So I cannot fault it for saying it is probably the most universal utilitarian compass you can get. It's kind of a clear base plate. Now, at the same stretch of that, once again, my opinion, if you're never going to take a map with you, probably not such a major factor for you. If you're just taking a compass... 
Uh, for instance, hunting. Well, that was one of my first uh, interactions with using a compass. I carried a compass. It was much like this one here, which is why I have it. Uh, it had no queer base plate, but I had no map to reference it off anyway. I would get out of the truck, uh, and at the time I might have been a little underage for driving, but it was in right. the country and it was a different time. But in any case, you get out of the truck, I'm going to go in the woods in this direction, you pop your compass out, you look, oh, I'm heading in at south-southeast, so I just keep that going, and as I'm walking in, I'll take a few checks, keep my direction fairly constant. I know if I do the reverse, it's going to drag me back out to the road. Very generic uh, directions with that. Don't get me wrong. There is no like pinpoint accuracy with that. But if that is all you were using it for, then something like this, in my mind, perfectly acceptable. Uh, this is just a cheaper one, for lack of a better thing. Uh, I have can't remember where it comes from. Uh, but it, it is literally just like a no frills kind of compass. I didn't even include it on our list. I just wanted to make reference to this because there are a lot of people out there. This would probably do for them for the basics off it. They are, they're only going to tuck it in their pocket. They may pull it out like three times a year. Same as what you've got in your hand. It would be the most identical thing. And you have the benefit of the, having the clear backing on it. I think actually if I popped this one, uh, it does pull out of this thing, but I don't want to stress it too much because it's not actually my compass. So, yeah, um, it wiggles. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, I mean, I have this little cheap one. Um, I say cheap. I don't remember what it costs. I've had it for so many years. And uh, this one has, uh, I think you have a similar problem. This one has a bubble in it. Yeah. Uh, they recommend when you start getting a bubble in it that it's about time to consider replacing them because that bubble can actually affect the uh, whether it properly points north especially if the bubble kind of interferes with the arrow uh yeah. so it just likes to be in mind like uh the bubble is considered a bad thing um but i have a one in a silver case like you have i think one of my daughters had it the nice thing with that one is it had a little brass arrow that you could turn around on mine and so you could set a bearing in it and sort of lock it not so much on this one it does rotate yeah. But it doesn't really have any locking declination on it. It's just kind of a free float. It has like the one thing that bothers me about this compass is it has like your your uh, rotating bezel, like you said. But on the back of it, you can see like I would prefer if there was a way to change that as well. And you can right. also tell that the there's some movement in that arrow as I'm moving that. So yeah. th those are some of the things that are going to show on a cheaper compass so the, the compass is definitely something you don't necessarily i mean if you're buying it it's kind of like a first aid kit it's kind of like a lot of other things we we have you, you're buying it with a purpose with a need buying a cheap one just to say you have a compass you're almost as well off as buying nothing because a cheap crappy compass that isn't going to do what it's supposed to do when it's going to fall apart while you're using it or one that you can't do what you need to isn't going to really help you it's just having something for the sake of having it that being said i don't think you need to buy the most expensive compass out there uh, i think you need to just make sure that it's a good functional compass that has the features that you need i think carrying a map is fairly important and if i'm going into an area um i'll often just print the area i'm in mm -hmm. and laminate it myself like i don't always take a full map uh, I usually have an idea of where I'm going, and then I have something just in case. Uh, the problem with that, the only problem I have with printing your own map is you can't guarantee the scale is correct. Uh, so you may not have a true 50 to 1 or 50,000 to 1 or a 20. Is it the other one? Here's the other one. is 1 to 25,000, 1 to, 20, one to 50,000, I think, are the most common. I have seen 1 to 10,000 on a few things. Yeah, one this one, one what's that? This this one here has the grid for one and one to twenty four thousand. So one to twenty four thousand. That's that's what this one is. I'm sure I've seen those too. I was gonna say uh, one to twenty five, one to fifty, and one to ten. It's yeah. on mine. One to fifty is a very common one. Yeah. So there's different scales you can get um, for sure, and you definitely want to consider that when you're when you're getting one uh it's good to get one 
a compass that has the same scale the maps you're going to tend to use if you if you are getting one on and uh yeah I mean, that's kind of the thing there's a ton of little features you get this one here has a little inclinometer which means i can basically figure out what you know zero degrees is and then sort of line it up with the the angle i'm going at and say oh i'm going up 20 degree grade or whatever uh it's never been a big thing for me now see that's something i've used quite a bit in my line of work when we were doing fires and stuff like that we had to calculate angles for yep. fire travel and stuff like that right and it was really handy to have you could just eyeball it i mean we're talking shady math here because we'd be yeah. looking for like isi initial spread index or uh, bui build up index or something like that and you know depending on the foliage it was going into if it was like nova scotia class one or something like that and you had it uh, a slope of like you know i don't know 15 degrees 20 degrees and your wind speed was from north at a certain degree you could literally calculate how fast that fire would yeah. potentially travel up that hill right so that's, oh, yeah. that was something i looked for in a compass versus something yeah. i would you know be like oh it's not important but once again but you, what are you going to do with your compass you could use it for that you can also use it to calculate the height of a tree yes uh right. and that 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 was the second time i used it a lot was when i was uh cruising lots cruising wood lots you'd have to go in yeah. and give a rough, rough estimate of what the wood was worth in that wood lot and then yeah. you'd have to figure out, you know, what's the base of the tree? What's the estimate of the top of the tree? How tall is that tree? Anyway, that's a whole other story. But yeah, that, that was another reason I used it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's tons of features for compasses. Uh, what are you going to use it for should be the first question that's going to come out there. Is it just going to be like, you know, a pocket stuffer? Uh, are you going to actually put a little time into it? Are you going to use maps? Are you thinking about doing search and rescue? Uh, do you work in a forest industry? Like you have to really think about that and kind of tailor your features towards that. Yeah. But um, why don't we jump right into it? I think the first one up is yours anyway, uh, or one of your recommendations. Uh, yeah. And we can talk about some of the features this one comes with. So this is the Baijia. Yeah. So this was a, an, a name brand that I, I haven't seen, but it has a lot of the features I'm looking for. I see the two scales on there. It looks like it can do the declination uh, adjustments, no problem. Uh, it's very blurry on my screen, but you can see, yeah, oh, no, it's cleared right up. Um, so you see it glows in the, it's got a glowing ring, so you can kind of see it. That there. Right there we go. You got the magnifying glass, you got the one to 25,000, the one to 50,000, the inclinometer, or Clonometer. What does it say? The other one they say global. Uh, global accurate needle, which is just it points north and south. Uh, sight mirror. We haven't actually talked about a sight mirror at all. So what? What's the importance of a sight mirror to you, Ben? So the sight mirror means when you get it set up. So you you decide I want to go sixty degrees or whatever. So you dial in your sixty degrees, and you get your 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 compass. You hold it out arm's length. And you're you're looking down at and I hold the string sort of to my chin so I can see down it. You can still see your compass. And once you get it right in the bed, and you can look down through that sight on top, because I have a little sight on here, I'll pick a tree or a rock or something that I can positively identify and I'll walk to that. And then I'll keep doing that. And if you just keep doing that, you keep walking to the next point, you will hold a pretty accurate bearing for quite a distance and the mirror just allows you to better do that because otherwise when you hold it out you can't see the thing so you're down turning it and you just don't get that accurate sight so a sighting mirror really does help you sight in um to where you're going the other thing is it's a great little survival tool because you can always use it to flash for help and stuff so but <laughs> no, the main that, that's a good thing to know though right the main function of it is is a sighting thing, and uh, yeah, um, that's that's the things I look for in, in a compass. So this compass, and I think was it fifteen bucks or something? Sixteen oh three. Sixteen oh three hits all the points I'm looking for. Now at sixteen dollars, is it necessarily going to be the best compass in the world? Maybe not. But honestly, like I didn't pay a lot for this 
broadstone that I've been using for quite a while. I think I paid less than 20 bucks in clearance Canadian Tire one day. The other one I have there, same broadstone, different uh, model from them. It didn't have all these options. And like I said, some of the things falls apart. It just got thrown in my pack as a, as a backup in case something ever happened to mine. Probably that I'll lose it because I'm horrible for losing things. Uh, I don't lose much in the woods. I usually like I, I work extra hard to, to prevent myself from losing stuff. But it's just something to keep in mind. Hey, and uh, this so, one even comes with a free whistle. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. So... Okay, you want to talk? You want to talk to us? go ahead. No, no, I, I was literally just going to say I just noticed that. That's all. Yeah. No, I did if a second ago. Uh, what does it say? LED light. Uh, and LED light for hiking. Yeah. So apparently, it comes with a few little things. This this happens to be a set of stuff. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So you get that tiny little LED light over here. You get a whistle, and you get the compass all in this. Yeah. So. Anyways, I mean, it, it goes to show you can get most of the things that I I look for in a compass for, say, the 20 buck mark or less, potentially, right? So uh, it's just something that, you know, you can consider. Um, I don't have this particular one, but if I was looking for a few backups or ones that loan out, that would probably be something I would look at purchasing and, and having there. Um because I can't afford to have three or four hundred dollar compasses. Um, yeah. What's our, uh, our next one up on the list there, boss? Okay, so the next one up on the list is one I was uh, going to recommend. And honestly, I was just looking up one that Christopher Loveless sent us in the comments there. The Sport, Sport Near Military uh, Lenstick Sighting Compass. Uh, I just happened to throw it up on Amazon, and right now it's on Lightning Deal. It's normally a $30 compass on for $14.44 with free shipping and no tax. And there's an hour and 30 minutes left on that. Uh, if I can figure out how to bring it over to our little... There we go. That should throw it up. Yeah, there we go. Uh, is that the one you're talking about, Chris? I mean, I looked up the one you were talking about as Ben was speaking with there. And if so, that actually doesn't look like too, too bad of a compass. Um, the only thing I would rag on it for you uh and i'm sure ben's already eyeballing it here is it does not have a clear base plate however it does have some of the features that i used to use on uh doing lines and stuff like that which is this all started with i sent ben one earlier today and we got in a little discussion about if it was good or bad and we just kind of left it alone to bring in here tonight now one of the things i liked about this one was you see that black gun sight down at the bottom? That allows you to get a super accurate line. Downside yeah. to these style of compasses, as Ben said, they don't work that well with a map. You can't transition over the map, get your uh, proper see-through so you can get a proper line and get your proper scale. That's the word I was looking for. Get your proper scale off it. Uh, this compass does do amazing things. But once again, you have to decide what are you doing with your compass. Uh, if I was going to go out and run lines again, this would probably be the compass I would look for. If I was going to go out and just survive and stuff like that, um, once again, not. I would probably look for something with a clear base plate. Not that it's bad. There's nothing wrong with this compass. Don't misunderstand. That's just you know my two cents on it. What's what's yours, Ben? Just while we're talking about this one. Yeah. I really encourage the map thing. So that's the thing is like, I've done some orienteering courses. We try to teach a few of them. And, and the, the thing I, I want is, is someone to be able to do that orienteering relatively quickly and easily. And with one like this, you almost need another tool. Like you, you almost need a, is it a protractor to find your angle? Mm -hmm. And then you, you transfer it over to your, your compass with the clear base plate. You lay your compass right on top of your map. You line everything up, you look through that clear compass, you get your your up and down, your north south lines lined up, and everything's set. Like your compass is set, you got your your angle. Uh, yeah, that could be actually a little bit more accurate for following that bearing once you have the bearing figured out. It's just getting that bearing to it is an extra tool, something else to be carrying. Um, it's an extra step that I would like to avoid. Um, you know, yeah. is it going to is it going to point you in the right direction? Yes. 
uh, it's just that extra step. And for especially people just trying to, to learn their way through map and compass, I think it, it adds a, a level of difficulty that I wouldn't recommend. That being said, if you like those functions, you like the look, the feel, and it still gets you a compass in your kit, I'm not going to say don't take it. It's just not my recommendation. Yep. And, and like I said, I completely agree with you there, Ben. Uh, and just to reiterate, the only reason I recommend this for running lines is because when GPSs did become more prominent, we actually compared one of the uh, clear base plate ones with one of these ones. Actually, it wasn't a clear base plate versus one of these ones. It was the rifle sight ones versus, you know, a non-rifle sighted, which most of these don't actually come in. You can find them, however, with a clear base plate and a rifle sight. And it's the rifle sight that I actually really like about it. Um, and over a three kilometer mark or march, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there was just less inconsistency with the rifle sight versus the non-rifle sight. So once again, what are you going to do with it? Not everybody's out there running lines, you know what I mean? Uh, and the only reason we needed such high accuracy for running lines is because the government is really stringent about what is their property. And people hate it when you take some of their property away from them. So, but not everybody's doing that. There's like, what, 1 in 50,000 people might have that job? So it's not a major feature to most people. So just food for thought. But anyway, uh, jumping to the next one, which is one that I recommend it, which is a Silva starter. Uh, and it goes without saying, I, I like Silva as a brand. I've, I have uh, all my compasses that I actually own here, minus that brass one, which is Melissa's, are Silva's. Uh, the Silva starter is a great compass. It was actually part of the ones the scouts used to pick up. That's actually where the one I have came from. Uh, there was a Scoutmaster uh since retired and that's where this came from and I, I don't know if you can read that i don't know how to get rid of the glare on this but the, anyway this is liverpool scouts is where this came from and uh it was just kind of a neat little memento uh it came from one of Moses' family that gave it to me and it's a good little compass for 20 bucks this thing is deadly accurate it does not have a lot of the flashy features though uh it does have a clear base plate which is good. It does have the lines on it for you can line up with a map. However, there is no scale on this. There is no uh, mirror on this. There is no magnifying glass on this. Like this is, is there not measurements up the side? Just a little bit. It's measurement in millimeters, but yeah. you don't have any reference for scale. Like uh, you know what I mean? Like you don't have the scale grids in here. No. For uh, your lines, right? For like the one to twenty five thousand, one to a thousand, one to fifty thousand uh and the one to 15 th this one has the most scales on it but anyway you know what i mean it's just a basic compass but it's a very great compass yeah it's a very basic compass silva is very um they get a good reputation in the compass world you know what i mean it's one of the larger names it's been around there a long time they know how to do their compasses and this is kind of their entry level compass and that's kind of where i went once again i'm not brand loyal to uh Silva, except I've just personally always had a really good, yeah, you know, no, working no, relationship it, with their products. They're 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 pretty well the gold standard for what I've seen in in compasses. Like they they are a great brand, and 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 it's that and Suntu is the other one that I've seen quite a bit. Uh, but you know, this is a good little pocket compass for sure. It's a little harder to sight in with. Um, because you, you don't have, like so you don't have the the sights on it at all. You can't, when you hold it out, you're going to lose that perspective. But uh, you can hold it down. You can get a good idea. You're not going to hold as accurate as line with this, but it's, this would be fine for a lot of people. It, it would easily reach that skill level that they need to get yourself in a general direction it's still going to be somewhat accurate. It's not going to compete with that sighting compass. It's not going to compete necessarily with with the clear base plate with the the, the glass. But uh, definitely a good option. And to get him something, you know, with, with that brand recognition, you knowing that you're getting a pretty solid product for under twenty bucks. It's and hard these to things be. go on sale too. I've seen them as low as fourteen ninety nine. Uh, this just happens to be what they're running for now. Uh, ben has mentioned a website many times, and I've started using it a lot now. Is Camel, Camel, Camel? Uh, throw right. this in there, and you'll see their prices sometimes. It apparently says they've gone as low as ten bucks. I haven't seen yeah. that. I have seen the fourteen ninety nine ones. So if you keep an eye on it, it's a great compass just to get in your pack. 
and it'll last you a long time. Uh, next one up, I believe is one of yours there, Ben. Uh, and now we're starting to get into the, the meteor compasses. This is still a Silva. This is a Silva guide 2.0. Yes. Yeah. So again, going with a Silva, I mean, Silva's pretty good. See this one here is 24,000 and 6250, which yeah. is weird. These are too odd. Uh, the 24,000s, I think I've seen a few times. 6250 is very odd to me. I'm going uh, to say that's more of an American standard for miles. And I'm just guessing at that. Would that make yeah, sense? That, that does make a bit of sense. But anyways, I mean, the price on this one isn't too bad. It does give you a lot of the things that we talked about. I mean, I can see the, the site on top of your mirror section there. Uh, I can't tell quickly how hard it is to do the declination on this particular one. I don't see an adjustment. That was one thing I was looking on it, but I, I, there has to be some sort of declination adjustment on it, I would assume, but it doesn't make any mention of it. So yeah, there's not much information on this particular one, but I was looking for something that was a good brand name and at a different spot because we hit a lot of things that are, are Amazon and a lot of these things, but not everyone is comfortable with Amazon. Some people like to go to the box stores and stuff. I wanted to find something sort of a little bit out there i kind of looked at canadian tire and atmosphere and a few of these others and honestly they don't have a lot of good things on their sites right now uh the two i have here actually came from canadian tire so they do sometimes have them walmart also sometimes has a few but it's a bit hit or miss when you find them uh take a look at them look at the features and stuff and and decide whether it's worth the money they're asking for but Silva, you're going to have a good brand name. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, just figuring out the declination is not that hard manually. Just keep it in mind. I, I may or may not have made that mistake myself uh, last night when I was doing some testing. So so it's, it's we have a question in the comments from Christopher Loveless. Between the 123 and the 2.0, how do you like the 2.0? It comes with a, a miniature magnifying glass attached to it. Looks like it would be easier for navigating with uh, if you've used it personally. So I, I assume you mean um, the Silva Guide 2.0 that we're talking about now versus the uh, the 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 Silva 123 starter. Um, I can say personally, and Ben may have a little bit better idea on the 2.0 because I haven't actually used it. But on the 123, it is a bare bones compass. It's very yeah. accurate, works great. But uh, if you're going to do a lot of map and compass work. Like, and I mean, you're going to take an interest in it and probably do it more than once, twice a year. I would recommend probably upgrading to something, uh, with a mirror and a sight on it, as well as a few little more features around the bevel, just cause it's going to make your life easier down the road. Not that this isn't a, a good compass. It's just, you're going to very quickly outgrow this compass. Uh, th yeah. this will get you in the door. You know what I mean? If you can pick one of these up for a real cheap price, this will get you in the door of map and compass work. Uh, and then you'll find yourself very quickly limited by the lack of features. Uh, now, I, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, personally, I recommend clear base plate with a mirror. Uh, I mean, that's every one that I picked had those those basic functions on it. Because if you want to get into orienteering, if you want to get into map and compass, you want to start trying to hit remote locations. Uh, going with something that's a bit more vague, not being able to shoot that good bearing means that you could miss a whole lake a whole pond a, a, a major goal um and it doesn't take long uh i've been in i mean as recently as within the last 24 hours practicing with some of these we were 15 meters off and just over 115 meter distance uh and that was with a good compass i mean it was pitch dark we had a few issues trying to get through some pretty dense brush 15 meters at a little over 115 meters travel is a significant deviation if we weren't using that compass it could have easily been 30. uh 30 meters off over 100 115 120 meters to me is putting us in in the ballpark of missing a lake if you're going for a kilometer or two, if you could literally miss the lake. You could go a lot further. You could miss your destination by quite a bit. Um, so 
I recommend like the more accurate you can get, the better. That's why I'm really pushing for something like this. Uh, the the other style that was shown earlier with the the, the sort of the military style of sighting compass, those are great if you have the bearings and you can do the calculations without the compass itself. A lot of math involved in those ones. <laughs> <laughs> but those are actually probably better if you can do that math and and, and transfer it over. Uh, but uh, just the little base plate one without the mirror, uh, I think it's a great backup. It's definitely something good to have in your pack. I just don't think I'd make it my personal uh, primary or yeah go to for sure. No, and I completely agree with that. Um, and honestly, while we're on the topic of that this uh silver guide 2.0 that we're talking about now great price point on that 30 bucks and that's from uh bass pro so i mean yeah. if you do your shopping around you may be able to tag that a little cheaper price you know mm -hmm. what i mean uh maybe you can't i don't know but a 30 bucks that's that's not a bad price for a good uh or decent at least silva compass once again you got that silver backing you know they're going to get their accuracy it has the mirror clear base plate sight line the whole works yep. was there anything else you want to say on the the guy 2.0 no, i mean we've got a ton in the description of this particular one it was you know I, I i i searched for some certain things i went on i didn't go looking for silver per se but I went on different box sites, and this was one that I found. I said, if I was looking for a compass tomorrow, if I had to replace one of mine because I lost or broke it, that was the one that I would highly consider. I would go in and definitely pick it up, and there's a good chance I'd leave with that in my pocket after I paid for it. <laughs> I was waiting to see where this went. <laughs> we do but, not condone theft here at Atlantic Bushcraft Adventures. No, ben does uh, not represent our views on stealing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I this is the type of one that this is it meets the the, the minimum requirements i'm looking for uh so it's, it's something to look for i mean if you want to get more specific if you if you're doing say search and rescue you find it what type of maps they're expecting you to use you'd probably make sure you had the right scales and stuff on it but in general this is a good good tool to figure things out at. so uh yeah that's that's one I would recommend you go and at least take a look at because the price point and what you're getting, it's a hard to beat little deal. That being said, we're gonna pull up another one and see how close that is. So this one is um, for me was like your second step in a map and compass work, and this is the Silva Explorer Pro Compass. We're yep. starting to get up there a little higher. This is a fifty dollar compass, uh, and one of my gripes with it is it's missing a mirror with a good sight. But this thing also has a ton of good things going for it for the sub 50. A little hard to see in this uh, picture here, but you do have that 1 to 25, 1 to 24, 1 to 50, 1 to 40. Like there's a lot of different uh, yeah. scales going on on this. And I actually have one of the older explorers because uh, I'm old. <laughs> and I mean, it's a good compass. Uh, it does have a, a kind of whistly thing on the end here. I, I don't know how much I re rely on that. Uh, apparently there was a method with these once upon a time where you could look through it and sight it in. I've never really figured out how that works. Um, but anyway, for this compass here, once again, sub 50, I like the fact that it's orange for high vis. I like the fact that it has two magnifying glasses. It's clear. All of those scales on it make it awesome for like a, a mapping orientation compass. My, once again, my gripe is the lack of proper sighting. So that's the only real drawback to something like this for a $50 compass. For me, it should be like, come on, at 50 bucks, you need that sight thing on there. But everything else I love about this compass, what you're getting for it. Yeah, uh, it does have the string in the right spot, so you can sort of hold it out. But it is going to be a little hard to hold it out straight and see that, that, uh, that needle at the same time. So and I agree the, with that. Uh, the other thing I liked about this, sorry, just to throw that in there, uh, this one does slope. And as we kind of said there a little at the start, it's one of the things I look for is to be able to be to calculate slope. Old habits die hard. And it definitely does have the deck. I can see the declaration screw, so yep, you can make right the there. Deck. If anybody's interested, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but yeah. Uh, yeah. 
right to the left of the orange bevel there, you see a little bump on the orange. That's where the declination adjustment is. And most Silvas, though I don't see it on this one, actually come with the tool for doing the adjustments on it. So I'm a little surprised it's not on the lanyard for this. It may actually be at the break of way part. It could be. Uh, oh, yeah, they but... open up and it's in there now. They don't have the little metal tabs anymore. Uh, I'm not sure on that. I'm just saying it's possible. Uh, now, I'm just going to throw it to the $16 and three cent one had most of that plus the mirror. Oh, I am not arguing that. I didn't actually <laughs> see that one until minutes before we started broadcasting. So uh, these two on my list kind of became yeah. non-issues at that point, if you know what I mean. But once again, but, I, I am still sto uh I like a Silva. There, there's there's something about a brand name that's that's been around so long that's so well trusted that when you go in you 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 kind of know what you're going with uh when you have a name that you've never heard of before uh it it doesn't necessarily give you that sense of security that you're looking for um so and I'm not arbitrarily throwing this out there either and I'm sure Ben will back me up during our map and compass courses and stuff like that um let's just put it this way I've never been lost with a Silva I've always no. come out roughly where I expected to with a Silva. I can't say that about other brands I have tried. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've seen some good compasses go bad. Uh, I have. So, I mean, it does exist. I've heard a lot of stories. Uh, some of them for good reasons, some of them bad. I've, I've seen compasses that were reversed. I've seen two or three of those. I've seen good compasses full of bubbles. Uh, and I've also seen perfectly good compasses point 90 degrees out of the way simply because of the terrain they were standing on. So magnetic anomalies in that particular area, large piece of iron underneath them or something screwing it up. Have you ever had that happen to yourself? Personally, no, but I've, I've both witnessed people with similar issues and I've, I, a lot of my search and rescue buddies have some pretty hilarious stories of that happening. Uh, so there was this one PGI we did and if you bring it up on the GPS scale later in year, you can almost pinpoint exactly where it all goes south because you'll get these really wide arcs around this area. And if you stood in the middle of it, we got crazy one day and what do we found in the middle of it? Your compass needle would literally just keep it wouldn't like spin in the movies like this big fast spin, but it would literally keep just kind of rotating around. And that's what it <laughs> ended up being. We looked up the geological maps and yeah. it was a bunch of iron ore in that area. So we think yeah. uh, there was previous lightning strikes and stuff there. We actually think some of it probably became magnetized. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's all. If anybody's wondering, that's how you make a magnet. You take some iron, add some power, electricity to it, and bam, you got a magnet, basically. It realigns the north and south poles, and pff, off you go. You can actually hammer a magnet, too, but that's another story. So, uh, anyways, a good little compass. Um uh... Yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't have picked this one if I had seen that $16 one before we started our discussion. But that's kind of the interesting things, why we did came in blind on this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what do we got next? So now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what, quote-unquote, would be a good compass. You know what I mean? We're going to hit some names that are pretty known in the compass world. And the first one up is the one you picked there. It's the Silva Compass uh, Ranger S. And yeah. if anybody knows anything about Silver Ranger, uh, for the longest time, it was kind of the gold standard. At once upon a time, if you went to the Maritime College of Force Technology, they told you to have a Silver Ranger compass. Not just a compass, a Silver Ranger compass. And there was a lot of other forestry schools that specifically asked for Silver Ranger compasses. Uh, that's kind of where mine came from. I have one of the original Rangers. This was bought yeah. back in the 90s. Uh, I mean, it served me great. The only problem I'm having with it now is it has formed a bubble, which is really heartbreaking to me because uh, I was telling Ben this, this compass actually has a little sentimental value to me. Uh, but not only that, I'm going to have to buy myself a new Ranger compass now because the Silver Ranger is my go-to compass, in all honesty. So, yeah, this this compass I found on Mech, I looked around quite a bit looking for a, you know, a solid, reliable compass that met all the things I wanted. Uh, and I was trying to look again for something a little out of Amazon. I did look on Amazon. I wasn't finding a lot of this caliber within Amazon at this price range. And that was the, the thing. 
this was one of the, I, I was actually looking a couple of weeks ago, uh, a buddy asked me, you know, some recommendations for a good compass. And we really got to talking about it. And he said, you know, price isn't not an option, but it's definitely not, not a limitation. And this was the one that I found that I thought was a pretty good deal. So I went looking for this again this week. Uh, and uh, yeah, tech specs. I mean, you got your one to 25,000, one to 50,000, sighting mirror, uh, scale, uh, a few other things on here, uh, declaration scale. I mean, it's got the stuff in it. Like it's it's there. Is there more pictures on that in on that plate? Or is that just, just the, the one? Just one picture. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to go wrong. Mech's a good, good company. I know they're going through some changes right now. They got bought out. To, they're no longer going to be a co-op. They're, they're going to be a privately owned company uh, bought by an American company, I believe. I think you're right. I don't know how that's going to change their products either. Uh, and I just pulled this up on Amazon simply because Amazon puts everybody in an even playing field. Even our international viewers can jump on Amazon for this stuff. But more specifically, uh, it's more money through Amazon, which is not that surprising, but better. We have more pictures. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. Um, uh, it's good to, good to be able to see, stuff, right? Um, so this is the back this is the clear that you can tell there uh this doesn't have your your angles in there which is the only drawback but i mean honestly not everybody needs that i get that uh it does have some lanyard um scales on there opens up nice sight on it uh i'm trying to see where the declination adjustment is on it but i i refuse to think this one does not have declination adjustment well, I'm sure it does. Some of them use a few different methods, mm. uh, and it may not be as obvious. Um, I... But, I mean, it, it's a good compass. Once again, uh, the Silver Ranger was and has been the gold standard in compasses for a long time. Uh, modern ones, again, they are. there's a lot of names running into it now. And there's some good compasses coming out there. So don't marry yourself to a Silva or any of those brand names. Look for a company, uh, look for a company that's going to suit your needs. Honestly, I think I'm going to buy that 1603 one. I'm, I'm definitely thinking that that's going to be ordered tonight. <laughs> you know what? For 16 bucks, I may give it a go to. Looks like a good compass. And I'd be curious to see how it holds up. I do got to get myself a new uh, Silver Ranger, though. So, like I said, I, I don't think I'll ever be without a good Silver Ranger in my collection. I, I, I'm a sucker for a good deal. I'm a sucker for one that has everything I want. And the other one does seem to have everything I want at a price that I'm more than willing to pay. Honestly, if I pay that and lose it, I wouldn't even break my heart. But paying 60, 70 bucks, you know, it's, it's you know. Five, six times more expensive. That's the problem, right? <laughs> oh, no. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, I, I don't really have anything to add to this, honestly. You, it, it was a great summary. Uh, was there any last thoughts you want on there? No. Just, you know, another good option at a place that a lot of us can go. I mean, you can order these online. You can go downtown uh, Halifax if you don't mind driving in downtown Halifax and, and going to Mac. And visit it love to see mac move to the outer edges of halifax personally <laughs> i agree but i'm sure you could find this at bass pro or cabela's as well well maybe not you, this specific one but you're going to find something at one of those two stores yeah yeah they have similar ones uh i'm seeing a lot of suntus around too uh, and those are all right to me an equally as good uh brand honestly uh they've been around for quite a while and have good reputation also um but the ones we're hitting are Silva's. They are, they do have a slightly better brand uh, recognition, recognition, I think. So uh, what's our next uh, option? I think? Uh, next one up is the Silver Ranger 2.0, which is, uh, I think that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's the last one I threw up there because this is actually pretty close to the Ranger that I currently have. Uh, yeah. And chances are this will be the one. I'm going to do a little bit more research, so I'm not going to marry to it right now. 
but this is probably wa the one I'll purchase to replace my retired Ranger now. Uh, and yes, this is a high price point compass. Uh, I'm not going to lie. You're paying a lot of money for a compass here. You're going to get a lot of nice features, uh, but you're going to get a lot of features that are probably repeated in a lot of the ones we just talked about to at a fraction of the cost. Uh, in all honesty, it, it does say that you can buy it new from $55 for $20 shipping. So you can knock it down. Yep. And that's what I mean. I'm going to do some, uh, I might look at like the expedition, uh, I want to look at a few other ones, too. I, once again, I'm kind of attached to the Ranger, but I, I'm trying to get myself out of that mindset. So for something I like about these Rangers, um, they have everything I ever wanted in a compass. You know what I mean? Nice sight lines, uh, good mirror. They're incredibly tough and robust. Most of them have an incline uh, degree on it, magnifying glass, multiple scales. Uh, you, you just really can't beat them. But once again... I do realize this is a very expensive compass uh, that's just repeating features that we've seen in your 1603 one, in all honesty. Yeah. So and I, honestly, I uh, bought, like, this one here, this Broadstone from Canadian Tire, I bought it five, six years ago. It's been in my pack ever since. Has every one of those options. Yep, and that's what I mean. I, I just like a Ranger. Uh, I'm not telling people to go out and buy this Ranger because it's the best compass they're ever going to get. Yeah. It's just probably the next one I'm going to purchase for no other reason than I like the Ranger name and I like a Silva. 100% yep. my own personal opinion. And Melissa will probably kill me for spending $110 on a compass when I could buy a $20 compass, get every single thing and work just as good. <laughs> but yeah. Jim, um, Jim, no more podcasts. <laughs> but yeah, so th this is kind of my... Uh, where i'll be going into this oh god she's coming in to kill me now uh <laughs> but uh for no other reason than it's just once again my personal preference now there is one on the end of this ben uh you and i just kind of looked at right before we did the podcast and neither of us have a whole lot of experience with it so do you no. want to throw that up and just kind of quickly chit chat about it because it might be something for people to look at i definitely think we should throw it up um we're not going to claim to know everything about these uh, we, we looked up orienteering type compasses because that's that's sort of the the goal in my mind is that's a skill that we should all kind of learn. This is a neat little thing. It's it's an orienteering type compass. This one's designed. It says it's for right hand. I, I assume you put that little belt thing over your thumb. You hold it in your hand. You can hold it out and you can dial in your direction. So it's it's a, it's a neat small little thing. It's not very big at all. And if you're doing some orienteering, I'm, I'm sure I can see how you could use that. It would be quite successful. Uh, but I haven't used it. I'd like to get one and play with it, honestly. And at 25-ish, I think we, I've seen yeah, a couple it's of 25 them. plus 10 on shipping. So you're looking at 35. Price point's a little high, maybe? I don't know. Maybe this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I honestly have no idea. Yeah. It's, it's worth doing some research in and finding out. I mean, they wouldn't exist if somebody didn't find them useful. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's a ton of compass options out there, uh, but there's right hand and left hands. This particular one's a right handed one The almost the identical one left was twice as much. So left handed people sucks to be you <laughs> learn right hand. I mean, I'm left handed. So, I mean, I'm not saying that to be mean, but sometimes it is easier, um, to a adapt. Left handed man working in a right handed world. It, it is, you know, it's a rough, it's a rough one. <laughs> No, it's completely true. My sister's left-handed, and she always told me that. Yeah. You're just a lefty basically functioning in a right-handed world. So, uh, But no, they sell both sides. Uh, it's an interesting little design. It's something different. I thought it would be worth throwing out there for people. There's a ton of options out there for compasses. We've recommended ones. I mean, generally, they're all more or less uh, good to work with a, a map. Um and it's because we feel that if you're into bushcraft, if you're into hiking and stuff, that you probably are working in conjunction with the map. Uh, if you're trying to explore new areas, I've often done this where I'll go find a map, I'll look and say, like, this looks like it would be an interesting spot. I see there's no roads or paths or power lines or anything going to it, so it's probably not easily accessible. This is when I'm using my map and compass to get into places. 
also use my GPS. Let's be honest. Use all tools you have available. But uh, it's it's a fun and exciting way to sort of explore an area and get the spots that, you know, there isn't a set path. Because when you're going in a, on a set trail, you don't need a compass as badly as when you're, you're doing something sort of out of the norm. Uh, I actually got sort of like tore up a bit and I'm not personally I, I didn't care but someone kind of got quite mad at me because I said I was going to Kedgy without a compass I'm like I'm, I'm on a whole bunch of lakes and trails I know like to me I didn't feel it was a necessity we had GPS's we had other options but it wasn't a huge concern for us but some people think oh you should never enter the woods without a compass uh, for me it does depend on where I'm going you're walking along a known trail and not really planning on leaving the trail. It's it's not as big a deal for me. I mean, I think technically in Nova Scotia, at least, uh, if you go into the woods for the use of hunting, you're required to bring some sort of navigational device, be it a compass or a GPS. So I think I, I kind of get why people have that mindset. They may confuse the two. For hunting. There is a requirement to have, I think you have to have a knife. I think you have to have a compass. I think you're supposed to have a map. Uh, all it says is navigation device. You have to have a cutting tool, a navigation device, uh, a fire starter, and a signaling device. I, unless they change it recently, it did actually clearly state a compass. Uh, I think they changed it because a lot of people are using GPS now. Yeah, probably. Does that actually counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a few years ago, it wasn't so, it hasn't been so bad lately. I haven't seen one in quite a few years, but a few years ago when, when geocaching was just getting popular and, uh, people were realizing you could do it with your phone. We did have a few people get lost. There was one here in Halifax. I remember he had a newspaper article on him. Uh, he went in, I think he ended up staying in a trailer, uh, but he went in and got lost. Um, and when he did eventually find his way out, I think he ended up in like a construction site and crashed in the trailer on the construction site for the night when they found him in the morning, uh, or a woods camp or something. But yeah, um, it hasn't been as much of a problem lately. Like I think people's cell phones last longer. People take spare charging devices and stuff, but, uh, yeah, GPSs and phones like that have gotten people lost. If you're going off the beaten trail, you're going just dis distances, having these devices are, are a must. If you're going on a pretty well, well-known trail and if no plans or expectation, you're going to have to leave the trail for anything. Uh, it, it does change it for me. Uh, it's, it's not something that I consider quite as important. And like in Kedji, in when I was in the Northern Lakes, you're surrounded by paths and trails. It's not, to me, it, it was harder for me to get lost than, than not, uh, and it was never a concern for me. So it's something I'm throwing out there. Some people may consider me an idiot for not, but I, I mean, we did have a map, we did have GPSs, we did have options, and we did, you know, we knew where we were to. We were, we had, and we were, we never once veered off actually, despite all the potential issues. So. Uh, <laughs> waking up in the fog in the morning still managed to hit dead on <laughs> paddle across the lake and hit my spot dead on oh, oh. Uh, we did have this best compasses of 2020 did you want to quickly go over that or yeah you can throw them up there because we have it and really didn't hear anything so this was just an article we found I, I uh, we put it up just it, it it may be something we'll hook a link to it at the bottom of the, the, the page um, but it just lists a handful of compasses and you can see most of them are the mirror type three and four are the are the other type without the mirror uh, but you got a Sunto HC2G uh, is it what is it a Sunto MC2G the Silver oh. Ranger S the Sunto A10 the Sunto M3G and the silver guide. Yeah. So, you know, these from this company's 
record this this writer's recommendation he's he's hit two companies basically to provide all these options just because these are well-known respectable brands and they have um the features and stuff that we want um the one thing to keep in mind i think with cheaper compasses is potentially the fluid found in your compass not so much the magnet or anything but some of them have a heavier oil mm -hmm. and the compass are very slow and sluggish uh, some of them have a lighter fluid and it, they bounce around a lot trying to get that kind of right trying to have it in something that's not going to freeze not going to you know getting those those little things right uh having the uh the uh indices the the, the markers easily identified so you can line them in that up these these little fine details it allows you to dial in a fine fine uh bearing device uh a rough one so a lot of these here like this particular sheep one that i've complained about the whole thing it's really hard to tell you if you're at you know 222 or 224 it, it's 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 rough to read so th these other ones they're much more precise just answer or have a little chat in our comment section <laughs> uh -huh. nothing major not really super attached to this so we'll keep it in the comment section but yeah uh, I mean, and for anybody out there that wants to do a little research on them, like this, this is just our, you know, mentions for what we look for in compasses. Once again, we're not experts, or at least I'm not. Ben, I don't know how Ben feels about himself, but uh, we are not experts in these things. These are simply our opinions based on our experiences with these. Ben does have a fair amount of experience when it comes to compasses with search and rescue. I have a fair amount of experience when it comes to compasses, when it comes to doing things like, uh, I said, running lines or working with natural resources. But that doesn't mean that our experiences and knowledges are all encompassing. We strongly encourage you to do your own research and look at reviews and stuff like that. This is just a guide to point you in, the, you know, the semi sort of right direction. yeah no a hundred percent uh like i said we're, we aren't professionals well we got some i guess in some ways that we are but we are not know-it-all for, for compasses <laughs> I, mean, I use it in a professional capacity uh, i've been trained in it uh it is important but you know it takes a lot of skill to use a compass properly it takes a lot of practice and if you sit back for a few years and don't touch it and you pick it up you'd be surprised how much you've forgotten how much you have to kind of relearn it comes back quick don't get me wrong and that's it, kind of where i'm at at this point be honest with you if somebody was to hand me a map and compass i'd be sitting and rolling some stuff over in my head it wouldn't just be you know straight off the cuff oh yeah this is exactly how to do it i know the gist of all of it but to yeah. actually be like within uh, what on our map and compass course, we had to be within so many meters. I don't know if I could actually pull that off again without sitting down and doing a little bit of practice. And honestly, I'm ashamed to say I don't practice it enough. It is a skill. Like Ben said, if you don't use it, you are 100% going to lose it. Yeah. Um, the method I find, um, and it's worth talking about. Um, GPSs are more, um generally accurate but compass is more immediately accurate does that kind of make sense so with a, a gps it, it can say you're within so many meters and when you're trying to get a bearing off of a gps it only really works when you're walking yes uh, you get a really good bearing with a compass you start or a gps with a compass when you stand stationary you can line that bearing up. You can pin off a point. You kind of walk to it. You'll you'll be right. If you use the two of them together, you can tell the GPS will tell you you're varying too much, and you can use that to sort of correct yourself. But using the compass, you're going to run a straighter line than you'll ever with a GPS. A hundred percent agree. And actually, there I I don't have the proof in front of me, but we have actually proved this at Natural Resources. 
we ran PGI lines with just a compass. And then yeah. the way we're supposed to do it uh, is you use your compass to take your bearing and your GPS is just for marking your 100 meter points. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, if all goes to hell, you can fi- find your way back out or whatever, right? Just in case yeah. you're rusty on the map and compass. So we've run them on just the GPS and then running them on the compass. The compass is way straighter and more accurate bearings. They stay truer to their bearing. Because with a PGI, you're dropped in the middle of the woods. They give you a bearing, point in this direction, walk a kilometer. Every 100 meters, you stop and you count rabbit pellets. And as you're walking along this line, you look for mo- uh, deer, moose droppings and a few other things. Yeah. Running just on the GPS, there was like at least 50 meter sway from left to right as you're, you know, going around things and stuff like that. As you said, if you stopped, your GPS basically doesn't tell you the direction you're going anymore until you start walking. And you're always kind of correcting for that. As we're with the uh, the compass, like you said, you're stationary, you hold it up, you can see your bearing and you have that sight. So you can literally nail that bearing down to like degrees and stay on that bearing yeah so to me the gps is a great addition to your navigation aid but your compass is still an awesome tool to get you that much more accurate um and between the two of them when you work them together properly uh, you really get your distances down right because pacing is an inexact science at best um, as, as I'm sure you've done the pacing was, I think the average male is 66 paces. So every 66 times is your right foot hitting the ground is about hundred meters. That's, that's not a guarantee, uh, through rough terrain, you may tend to make a lot more big steps to get around things, or you may end up making a lot more smaller steps to again, not trip over things. And in the end, it, you could vary by 10 to 15 steps, plus or minus, easy, per 100. So you know something's 150 meters away. Doesn't mean you're walking 99 step, or, you know, paces. Probably means you're walking something totally different. Uh, but with the compass, or the GPS, you can nail that down pretty close. Oh, easily. And funny enough, I have short legs. My pace on a straight is almost exactly one meter. Yeah. I only have a 28 inch seam. I'm like really short in the legs, uh, but I'm almost <laughs> six foot tall, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, you're right. Going through the woods. I know people that are like, oh, I'll just pace that off. I'm like, well, what's your pace? Oh, you know, it's like a meter and a quarter, meter and a half. Okay. Where did you take that pace? Oh, walking in the parking lot. So what is it in the woods? Oh, it's going to be the same. No. Mm. I mean, over time, the more you walk in the woods, the more you use pacing in the woods, you can get more accurate, but it is never a reliable way of figuring yourself out in the woods. I mean, you can kind of offset with your pacing to a degree. If you need to, you know, you're following a bearing and you need to offset to go around a lake or something. If you walk 150 paces this way, and you go 150 paces forward, and then you take 150 paces left, yes, you should be generally in the same area. But the better way of doing it is say you hit a lake, look across, if you are able to, look across that lake and find a point that is in line with your bearing, walk around your lake, still do your pacing, see how close you are to that point that you found, and then retake another bearing from there and continue on. And, I mean, anybody that's been in the woods a lot will tell you stuff like that. It, your pace is not the same on flat ground as it is in the woods. And that's not including going up inclines or down declines. Like, the, it changes then. You tend to take shorter steps going downhill, but cover the same amount of distance. As we're uphill, a lot of people tend to take larger steps, but they're not getting the full meter. Because, you you know, you have to do the rise over run, get your slope, and calculate all that out. Then you get a hypotenuse of a triangle. I mean, there's a lot of math going on there. And you're not going to do that in your head, just pacing stuff off. You know what I mean? So don't rely on your pace. Rely on your compass. The compass is tried and true. It is going to give you a bearing. It is going to give you that stuff. If you want to use your pace as a secondary method of just guessing or loosely tracking where you are, that's fine. But don't use it as your primary. Well, your pace is... 
primarily to figure out distance. So, you know, I'm at point A and I need to get to point B. I'm going to use my compass and it should get me. And it, it depends on what you're doing. Like with the search and rescue, sometimes we're sent to actual points. So we don't know what that's going to be at that point. We just know they want us at that point. So without the GPS, it's really hard to tell you reach there, but sometimes you're, you're doing your best with the equipment you have. Um, when I do things like I, you know, if I'm setting a point to go in the woods, I'm looking for the mouth of a river or a certain point on a lake or something like a, a, a set point, like a high point, you know, when you get there, because you've reached what you expected to reach. It's a the highest feature. It's a prominent feature because I'm looking at a map and trying to pick out a prominent feature. The other thing that you'll eventually get into if you're in the, in to the woods and you're trying to locate where you're to is identifying known points and getting your bearing to each of those and then drawing it across the map and you can figure out where you're to. Again, a sighting compass is going to really allow you to hit two good points. The say a cell phone tower and the highest hill in, in the, in the province or you know in the area you can point those points out and then say okay i'm, I'm along that line uh, so that's gonna do work well so coming up on the tail end of this i got a little story for you and i want your opinion on it ben does not know the story i want an opinion good or bad map and compass courses i've been on a few survival boot camps i've been on a few survival map and compass courses and you always hear this dreaded story and i've actually had it happen once uh during a map and compass section of a survival boot camp which i was on they will basically load you into a van drive you off in the middle of the woods boot you out with a map and compass and tell you your lunch is going to be at this point if you get there you eat if you don't you don't what's your thoughts on things like that i mean most of us eventually made it there and ate i wasn't overly keen with that to be honest with you, I don't like people basing their food for the day on how well you can use a compass. But on the same side of that, their argument was in a survival situation, and it was a survival boot camp, that literally could mean the difference between life and death. I think that sounds like a challenge me and you should do. I've done it before. <laughs> if yeah. it's a deep fried turkey bud, trust me, I'll find it. <laughs> Have you Smell noticed I have always been able to work that deep fried turkey into every single episode since we did it <laughs> i had deep fried turkey last weekend but man that that deep fried turkey was just amazing if anybody doesn't know what i'm talking about go check our past episodes you'll figure it out <laughs> robert's favorite episode deep was, fried turkey it was just the best but yeah so what's your thoughts on things like that honestly i think putting that kind of incentive in is a great idea um, if that's one where you're just, you know, point A to point B, it's not all that hard, really. If they had you go to point A to point B to point C to D, E, F, and G, now you're hitting complications because if you miss one, then your chances of finding the next one gets progressively worse. So it was point A to point B. We have never been in the location before. Uh, the only terrain markers we had to go off were on a map and we did end up crossing swamps and in valleys and stuff like it, we're talking a six kilometer hike here. You know, yeah. we had literally eaten. We went over some classroom stuff. Uh, this was on day three, I think it was. And then they're like, all right, hop in. And we drove for 30 minutes and they fired us out. So we were full. We were hydrated. We had our packs and stuff like that. And to be fair, we had snacks and just, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it was a unique experience until you're actually thrown into something like that. It's all good and dandy to hear about it and what people's thoughts and stuff are on it, but it's a completely different thing when you're literally staying in the middle of the woods going, I legitimately have no idea where I'm at, except I'm in the province of New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and I don't know what's around me. I've never seen this terrain. I'm not super familiar with the terrain because I'm from Nova Scotia, and you're just kind of like, well, this is potentially how I die. <laughs> well. They, like, you know, one of my goals in life is eventually end up on a show like Alone and, and win the million dollars because I'm going to win if I get on it. Uh, just throwing that out there for anyone listening that has the power to make this happen. But one of the episodes, the one where they went in with their, their with a, a friend, buddy, significant other, whatever, they dropped people off in Vancouver. I think it was Vancouver. Um, it wasn't BC, I'm no. Uh, 
but basically they had to travel. Everyone had to travel 10 kilometers along a bearing to their, their partner. And you know what the average time was to cover that 10 kilometers? Or 10 miles? 10 miles. Oh, so we're talking about 16 kilometers. Hmm. I'm going to go with two days, two, three days. More. Seriously? Yeah. How much? I think it was close to a kilometer a day a lot of them were averaging. I'd have to look it back up. But um, it was extremely rough and tr rugged terrain, and they're carrying a fair amount of gear. And trying to follow a set bearing to that distance, 10 kilometers, you really can't deviate that much. And that type of terrain, you can't necessarily walk in a straight line. So when you deviate, you got to you gotta do all the proper math. You can went over 100 meters, and then I had to go up, and then I have to go back 100 meters, get on that bearing, and keep going. I mean, that all takes time and effort. And uh, I, suppose. It took me, I think it took most of them at least a week. To, to run into their their buddy. I think the average was close to 10 days. Uh, and a couple of them didn't make it. Well, at least one got injured in that trip to the end. So, uh, and that would be the worst on something like that. Getting injured, being both the guy trying to find the other fellow and the other fellow waiting. Yeah. So where does that leave them? Well, the, the one waiting was, I mean, they had a goal, and that was to build a camp so when the other person gets there, they have really a place to sleep, a place to end and potentially food, like to have, have a set up camp. Um, and of course, the other guy, like each had half the gear. So the 10 items beyond their, their clothes and stuff, but their 10 survival items that they had was split five and with one guy and five with the other. So the other one is waiting for his buddy to show up with the additional gear. You know what I mean? Like, so how did they manage food with that? Was the guy traveling given any amount of food, or did they have to find provisions as they went? More or less, yeah. That sucks. Okay, yeah, that's brutal. And, of course, that all adds time, right? Like, uh, you know, I don't know. I know one guy, I think, lost an axe on the trip. Like he, he lost it. He was devastated. So uh, things like that. But, no, I mean, navigation is extremely important. Having the tools and the knowledge to use it is 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 key, and uh, I mean, compass is pretty well one of your basic navigation tools. Uh, I think we covered that pretty good this week. Uh, I hope everyone that watched has enjoyed it. It's a major topic. I mean, we could talk on this for hours, everybody, but we're gonna try and limit it to an hour and twenty minutes. Apparently, uh, with only a couple deviations, we actually held on pretty good this time. The entire topic was at least about navigating and compasses. Uh, we didn't yeah. jump off too much except for my one mention of turkey but at least we tied that into navigating and compasses but yeah, yeah so we'd love to hear from you guys as always throw us your suggestions for compasses once again just our opinions our ideas you can email us uh, podcast at atlanticbushcraft.ca hit us up on facebook youtube instagram uh twitter i think we're still on twitter <laughs> to be fair not the best when it comes to social media but we do check them uh, we are just more wood savvy than tech savvy, uh, but we are managing. Neither of us are big, big on actually posting stuff on these things. Uh, we, we we are really good at doing our podcast once a week. We never miss a week, but taking pictures and stuff and even getting things to each other. I know I owe you some videos. <laughs> it's just how it goes. We are better at doing uh, I, I know myself, I, I have a hard time taking, um, photos and stuff like that. Yeah, no, uh, me too. Uh, my wife's much better at it. In fact, a lot of the videos I have for you are actually on her device. So they are coming as soon as I get them off her device and onto you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, good episode. We've gone well over our time. Uh, we're approaching the hour and a half mark, so I think it's a good time to say goodbye to everyone, and if there anyone still listening, apparently. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, still talking to the few. We have our, our normal workers. We were actually, uh, we have four viewers right now. So some people held on. We had eight there at one point. I thought that was rather impressive. We are getting more in our concurrent episodes. But anyway, yeah, I think you hit it right on the head there, bud. We should probably pack her up. Uh, we're starting to bore people, I think. They're starting to... Hey, we just got a fifth. Look at that. Rolled in at the end. So whoever the fifth is, welcome to the show. But we are just done. So have a good night, everybody, from me. Unless you got anything else to say, Ben. Good night, everyone. See you. Bye.